Hey, are you ready to do some fun math tasks with us? My name is Shannon from SIS The Number Four Teachers. I'm so glad that you joined us for our introduction video on how to bring math tasks into your classroom or even at home. We're gonna flex your thinking muscles with rich math tasks. We have a variety of videos on our website at sis4teachers.org that you can access that are really good for littles all the way to second grade, kind of that primary audience. And then you'll find some that'll be really great for the upper grades three through five. In our tutorial today, we're going to be really focusing a lot on integrating the eight math practices. Some people in different states call this the process standards, but this is really what's at the core of the higher order thinking skills. It is so much different than the way you and I grew up learning math. We don't just have to solve a problem and answer it. They want kids to have higher level thinking. So practice one says make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Practice two wants kids to really start to reason with numbers and words and words to numbers. Number three talks about constructing viable arguments and critiquing the reasoning of others. I can tell you that when I grew up, there was no critiquing. This is how math was. You do it step A, step B, step C. There was no room to talk, solve problems different ways. This is at the core of what we're doing within 21st century standards to really look at these eight math practices. You can download our placemat from our ISD on our website at sis4teachers.org. What do all of these practices mean and how do I know if a child really understands a method in math just a mile long or do they know it a mile deep? The good thing is, is that these practices are not just for young, you know, for our older children. They're actually pre-K all the way through 12. So even our littles have a separate little poster kind of that talks about how we can help to get them to promote mathematical thinking in their young minds as they're doing things with real objects in the physical world, maybe with quantitative pictures. And we're gonna kind of take it a step further as we look at what we're doing. Every task that we present for you will always start off with what I call an anticipatory set. You want the child to kind of get in the mind of where they're going in the concept that you're asking them to do to apply mathematics. So whether that is a photo like this winter wonderland for our winter gear task, it could be a short video clip or even a book that you might read from your home or in your classroom to get the child to be thinking about winter gear. In our tutorial videos, we'll talk about how you might question and how you might start to ask some of the specific questions that might be in the task as you're having a conversation. Don't worry, you won't give away the task from the anticipatory set because the child will eventually have to act this out concretely, pictorially, and abstractly. So even though you're having conversations about it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're giving away the answer to what you're doing. We're gonna focus a lot on concrete pictorial abstract because we wanna make sure that children don't just understand these concepts with these tasks at just a low basic level of just acting it out, but can they draw a picture to explain their thinking? Can they tell you about their mathematical thinking? Can they do an equation with it? So as we start to look at the task, the example I sort of have for you here is called winter gear. All the scenarios that you do, you really want it to be able to relate to a child. So if, if the child is in a very rural area with farming, there's no problem talking about things that might go on in um, a farm. If you have a child that maybe lives more in an area where there's lots of shopping and things, you could give an example with them shopping. You want to make sure that the task really relates to a real life scenario that they can understand why math really makes sense to them, why math is not just about abstract numbers, that I can actually experience numbers throughout my day. So the winter gear task obviously would be for a, if, you know, a child that lives where it's cold, but the task says six of my friends lined up to go out to play in the snow. Each child had on a hat and a boot, a hat and boots. How many boots did I see? How many hats did I see? Remember that every task is differentiable. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but I like it. The idea is that I could change this to say that two friends lined up to go outside for recess, or maybe I want to do it for second grade and say that 10 friends lined up. Each task, you can change the quantity that you're working with based on the age of the children or the child that you're working with. Once the math task is given, we like for students to be able to act it out concretely. Now, I love it in classrooms when we just give multiple concrete objects. Instead of saying, here's the counter, here's how you do it, let's do it in the same you know, cyclical process, give children 
maybe one inch square tiles. Give them maybe Unifix cubes or counters, or if you're at home, give them multiple things that they can build with, whether it's pennies or cereal. Let them build on a map. You don't have to use our math work mat. You can just use a piece of construction paper or anything that you're denoting where you want the process to take place for them to map it out. Now I'm gonna take you in this next part inside of a classroom where we were doing this task. I had lowered this task a little bit to say that five friends were going outside for recess. Each of them had on a hat and a pair of boots. I went as far as reading a book to talk about how snow gear works. We even had kids line up and we started counting pretend hats and boots. Let's look at how some of them decided to respond. What I want you to do is not feel like you're the giver of all the information. Take a step back. Let there be a little bit of productive struggle. Let the child try to act out the task with the counters. See how they are really thinking about how that task is coming to fruition. Now, if every kid's mat looked like this kid walking around the room, we would have been so excited. So they have this where there are six children that lined up and they um, have a hat and they have boots. So that looks really great. I went to another child and they had a smattering kind of, of counters. And I asked, hey, what do you have there? And they said, I have all these hats and boots. Obviously, this child is more at a novice level, maybe not so much at that practitioner um, or expert level, right, or apprentice, but that's that level where they are. It's very obvious to wanna to go and say, here is a hat and here are the boots. Again, we're giving the information that might not necessarily be needed. Some students, you really wanna gain perspective. We have the child off to the right that does have their six hats and has six blue counters. When I went up to this child, they said that those red counters on the screen were their hats, but each blue counter was actually worth two. So when they skip counted two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, they were able to tell me there were 12 boots. The child to the left, I really needed to do some perspective gaining because I thought they were making flowers. But in fact, they were making people that are holding hands and there is a hat and boots. It's all about gaining the perspective of how the child is really going through the task. You're questioning, not leading questions. You're asking open-ended questions, getting that metacognition to really start to work. Six friends went out to play in the snow in our example here. We end up showing a drawing, which is getting in that pictorial representation. I don't have to draw fancy hat and fancy boots. An X can represent what that is. A ring around it might mean that it's one friend. Obviously on some of these, we have it really more um, in the lower L kind of depicted where they had the label. So they remember to answer, how many boots do we have? How many hats do we have? In the lower L towards the bottom, kids can record their mathematical thinking just from you, you know, it could be dictated if you wanted. Second and grading up can write their own way of explaining. When you look at the three, five tasks, they're really more open. They don't really have such um, scaffolds or prompts for them because we want them to be able to draw their own picture, be able to write their mathematical equation and explain their mathematical thinking. So they sort of have more of a list of things to do to make their task come to life. But a child might just dictate to you what they did. First, I put out six red counters for each hat. Next, I put two blue counters next to each red, you know, hat. And then I counted my six boots and I had my 12, or my six hats, and then I got my 12 boots. So getting children to really think about this in the way that their, their mindset is, is what we're looking at here. Getting a little bit of that deeper thinking going. Some of the tasks might not have a definitive answer. Like one of them is looking under the table to see how many, you know, you see eight legs, who do they belong to? Well, there's multiple answers for that. And so a task doesn't have to have a definitive correct or incorrect answer. We're just looking at their math knowledge. Are they more of a novice with this concept? Are they more of an apprentice, a practitioner, or an expert and they're solving it more than one way? We're getting into that deeper thinking to really help apply those eight math practices. We hope that you've enjoyed our introduction video on how to bring math tasks either into your classroom or into your home. You can go to our website at sis4teachers.org to see lots of great video tutorials as well as free downloads to help you integrate tasks in your room. Uh, you also can go to any of our social media channels and we hope that you check us out and follow us at either Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or LinkedIn, all of the same handle at sis4teachers. Thanks so much for joining us.